Kevin, I think I need to check and see if my heart is still beating that football game right there. Alabama winning the national championship 26-23 in such a fashion. I don't know. I've been a part of a lot of games, but with that kind of drama and that intensity, I don't know about you, but where does that measure up to some of the other Alabama games you've seen, especially national championship games? This one stands alone. Certainly, it took the longest because they had to go to overtime. They didn't have the lead for one second of official game time, but they'll own it for eternity. It doesn't get any better than that. It's crazy. When you look at just what Alabama's accomplished all season long uh, under Jalen Hurts, a lot of speculation how he was as a quarterback. Has he developed? Has he hit his stride? Um, still a lot of questions even coming into this game after they knocked off Clemson. And then in the second half, Nick Saban puts in Tua Tonga-Vailoa, the true freshman quarterback. Your thoughts on that gutsy move by Nick Saban. Is that something you would have ever expected from him? It's not his way, particularly at the quarterback position. He is loyal to a fault to his starting quarterbacks. And a lot of people had been calling for Tua to get more time. Saban resisted. He probably should have done it against Auburn. He could have done it against Clemson. They had a plan to do it against Clemson and then backed off when they saw that Clemson couldn't score and they were able to dominate that game defensively. But this was a move that was part inspiration and part desperation because they were going nowhere fast after that first half. If they had continued on that path, they might have been run out of this place. So I think it's the greatest toughest, smartest, gutsiest decision of Nick Saban's career. And it's got to be a tough across the board. Jalen Hurts, the guy that takes you into the postseason, did it last year. Obviously, they come up short against Clemson, but in talking to uh, my friend Jim Dunaway, he was in the locker room afterwards with uh, Jalen Hurts and said he's been humble about the whole thing. But you have to imagine, you know, he goes home tonight knowing, okay, you know, my team just won a national championship, but now suddenly he's looking in the rearview mirror and knows he's competing for a job. Well, let's make a point here. Alabama doesn't get to this game without Jalen Hurts. Right. They don't go 11-1 and in the regular season without Jalen Hurts. They are not here. He is an integral part of this national championship. That's probably hard for him to rationalize, to see the big picture right now in the wake of the way this game went for him personally. But he is too good a person. He is too good a teammate. He's too good a young man uh, not to appreciate what he played, the role he played in this, and his teammates believe in him as well. Hey, and something else to point out, Calvin Ridley wearing his brother's jersey, the number eight jersey over for Georgia after the football game. He had put it on. I talked to him after the game, and uh, he just said, you know, it's something I just had to do, but I had to congratulate him for going out there and putting up a tough fight, obviously, uh, you know, a fun dynamic to see there. And, and great to see these guys celebrate this last thing here. A lot of people want to say, is the Alabama dynasty dead? They're starting to fall off. They you know, barely get into the playoff, obviously go out and perform against Clemson. And then we saw what was happening here and it was all this speculation. But I mean, is that even, is that even a p thing to say that dynasty's dead? Like, how is that even possible? Nick well, Saban just got his fifth national championship under you know, Alabama. Well, think about it. Last year, for the first time, he lost in a national championship game. Mm -hmm. It went to the last second before it happened, but it happened this year. They didn't win the SEC West. They didn't win the state championship. Right. They didn't win the conference championship. They got the last spot in the playoff. And while they dominated Clemson defensively, they didn't play very well offensively. Uh, a lot of people thought Georgia was ready to dethrone Alabama as the king of the SEC, led by Kirby Smart, who learned at the foot of the master Nick Saban. And it looked like that was happening after 30 minutes here tonight. But what's amazing is, is that Alabama didn't just keep the dynasty from dying, they found the fountain of youth. They went to Tua Tungavaloa, a true freshman. They went to Najee Harris, a true freshman at tailback. And then who caught the winning touchdown pass from true freshman Tua Tungavaloa? True freshman Devontae Smith. So not only is the dynasty not dead, it is refreshed, it's renewed, with maybe the best freshman class we've seen at Alabama since 2008, which set the foundation for all of this. So there is no end in sight. And when you look at that, they don't, they don't win the state championship, like you said, the SEC championship, but no team wants to go out with a loss in this season. They take it for all the marbles, national championship. Alabama, your 2017 national championship uh, champions. He's Kevin Skarbinski. I'm Lauren Sisler, and that is it here from the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We're signing off until next year. Well, maybe for a few days. We'll see ya.
I'm going to take a nap. <laughs>